A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, September 22, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 9 p.m. local time in the Western Caribbean Sea, where we are closely monitoring what has been designated as Invest 97. This is associated with a low pressure system that has developed just northeast of Honduras and Nicaragua, and now has a high probability of becoming a tropical storm as it moves toward the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Eventually, it is expected to reach Florida, Georgia, or Alabama as a hurricane. I'm recording this forecast update because there have been some changes, as this system looks much more organized during the afternoon and evening today. The National Hurricane Center has increased the probabilities of developing a tropical depression to 50% within the next 48 hours, and to 80% within the next 7 days. On the other hand, we are also closely watching Tropical Depression Number 10 of the Pacific season, which will soon be classified as Tropical Storm Jong as it approaches Oaxaca and Chiapas, expected to arrive between Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. I mention this system because it could influence Invest 97. It seems Tropical Depression Number 10 is strengthening faster than anticipated, and if it intensifies further, it could create some wind shear over Invest 97 and keep it weaker than global models project. However, there is great uncertainty, and we need to watch calmly to see what happens in the Western Caribbean Sea, as well as regarding Tropical Depression Number 10. When we look at infrared satellite imagery, we can see strong thunderstorms developing southwest of Jamaica, which may lead to this system continuing to organize as it moves northwest. Its trajectory is expected to bring heavy rains, especially to western Cuba, and it is now projected to pass near the Yucatan Peninsula or Pinar del Rio in Cuba as a tropical storm. The next name on the list is Tropical Storm Helene. So there is a high probability that this disturbance will become Tropical Storm Helene and eventually Hurricane Helene once it reaches the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that over the next three days, its northwestward trajectory will bring heavy downpours, especially to western Cuba and parts of the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula. Models project between 150 to 200 millimeters of accumulated rainfall, particularly between Tuesday and Wednesday. Additionally, since we now have Invest, we have specialized trajectories. Notice that there is good consensus that it will maintain a north-northwestward path over the next 48 hours. For now, models project it passing between the Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba, then moving north to eventually reach the Florida Panhandle and parts of Georgia or Alabama. It's projected to arrive in that area by Thursday afternoon or evening. We also have intensity projections. Here you can see that specialized models predict it will make landfall as a hurricane in the United States. There is still uncertainty, but the consensus is that it will be a Category 2 hurricane. However, note that some models project it could even reach Category 3 strength. Let's take a look at the latest projections from global models. Here we have the GFS model, which develops Tropical Storm Helene by Monday afternoon while maintaining a northwestward trajectory passing near the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 1 hurricane by Wednesday morning, and eventually maintaining that trajectory north until reaching the Florida Panhandle by Thursday afternoon or evening as a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane. Furthermore, the projection from the European model generally aligns with this forecast. It has the future tropical storm passing very close to the Yucatan Peninsula by Wednesday morning and eventually strengthening as it moves north. In this case, the model projects it will reach the Florida Big Bend area and western Georgia as a Category 1 hurricane, also coinciding with a Thursday afternoon or evening landfall in the southeastern United States. Other models, like the German model, also agree that it will make landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, though in this case a bit further east over the Florida Big Bend. Definitely, residents from the Florida Big Bend, Florida Panhandle, Mississippi, Alabama and Georgia should continue to closely monitor its development, as well as the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula and Pinar del Rio in Cuba. What does concern us is that some global models specialized in intensity are projecting that it could arrive stronger than what the global models predict. For example, one model projects it will reach Category 3 hurricane status. Another model projects a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane making landfall in Florida, and the other two best intensity models also project that it could arrive as a Category 3 hurricane when it reaches the southeastern United States. Well, that's all for this forecast update. Tomorrow I will record new videos to keep you informed. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I post new videos. I hope you all have an excellent night, and I'll see you tomorrow with new updates. Until then, goodbye.